you mentioned, then that loss against Wisconsin on Saturday. Take a guess who's going to win this tip. <laughs> well, you're right, but pretty threw it away. Quick turnover there. Threw that basketball straight out of bounds. Braden Smith, who couldn't find a receiver. And Nebraska not turning teams over nearly as much this season, but they turned Indiana over 19 times. Braden Smith has had some issues with turnovers the last five games. Purdue going to have to tighten it up. And what a start for Rick Mass. Rick Mass lines one up. He shot it at a 35% clip the last three games. That's going to take Zach E away from the rim and could be a tough matchup for the big fella. Mass, the grad transfer from Bradley in Illinois. Two-time all-conference player there. Now Purdue on the offensive end of the court. Drop it down inside. Now back outside. Lawyer dishes. Three ball the other way. Won't go. Rebound to Williams. Now Williams wants to run with it. Contact there. An offensive call. And the home crowd does not like it. Good to see Bryce Williams out here. He was questionable. Suffered that foot injury at the end of the Wisconsin game. Boy, I, that's, to me, that's a block. Uh, uh, Fletcher Lawyer is certainly still moving. Bryce Williams putting some pressure on the defense in transition. It's a tough call for Nebraska early in the game. Great Smith with it. Now over to Lawyer. Back to Lawyer. Had an opportunity to get into the lane. Nice take. Able to draw the foul on his way there. And Fletcher Lawyer, two games in his career, just a sophomore, but he has been a Nebraska killer. 24 points a game, 47% from the field, 36% last year from three. You know, Zach Eady was more limited in his scoring in those games against the Huskers last season, just 11 a game, but Fletcher, Fletcher Lawyer really, really hurt Nebraska. The call goes against Jamarcus Lawrence. What's been most, most impressive about Purdue? starting this year through your eyes well I, I think Zach Eady has played like the national player of the year once again but the most impressive thing to me is that the, the guys around him have stepped up to, to make plays in Illinois is a, is a great example he only scores 10 points does have 15 rebounds but you've got other guys that can step up and hurt you in a variety of ways Lance Jones and Trey Kaufman Wren are two examples of, of those two that stepped up now on the offensive end of the court calling for the basketball is Max from three-point land now down inside the paint zone? What he could do? Showing off the range and now going right at Zach Eady. He can score with either hand. He can play five out. Rink Mass, a very talented, skilled five man. And the Kaufman Red, one more pass shot won't go. Now Kaufman Red battling for the board, and able to secure that possession right back for Purdue inside to Eady. Eady, great passer, taking it back outside of these terrific shooters. This is a helter-skelter possession. You can see just how active Nebraska's hands are defensively. And what an effort by Jawan Gary to get that timeout. There is an energy inside this building. You think they know they got the number one team in the country in here. And you can fear, or even into this year, that, that their defense can be pretty good. And they're going to have to be grimy. And they're going to have to get after it. So far, early in this game, they are doing just that. On. Gary with it over to Mast. Now Mast to Lawrence. And right back inside to Mast. Double team comes and he's looking to pass. It's pretty good by Purdue the there. A little, little post trap and then you see that rotation. To the paint. Mast good start offensively and now an air ball to go along with what was a good start. Three ball and a nice two on the inside. Back in, just doing his thing, standing him up and getting a fingertip on that jumper there from Mast. Lawyer inside, Edie, well short with that one. You hear the crowd loving it. You have to push Zach Edie off the block. Just to make him catch that thing far out there. That gives yourself just such a better chance of, of having a successful post trap or even, in that case, one on one defense with Rick Mass. Now Smith swings it around, back inside to Edie. Double team is there. Smith is wide open. Edie finds him. Shot won't go. Rebound to Edie. And he stepped on the line. He said, I'm pushed. Ref disagrees that he stepped right there on the white line possession to the Huskers. Right there. You can see the types of shots that Purdue can get with Zach Edie post ups. He rockets that thing across. And you can see here Rink Mass just pushing him out. Edie out by that Big Ten logo. 
Nebraska showing three and four sets of eyes every time he touches the ball. Williams inside the match. That has been her favorite philosophy offensively to get this game going for Nebraska. That's on Zach Eady right there. Post traps coming from the middle of the floor. His responsibility is the baseline side. And right mass, little spin move, gets to the other side of the rim. Smith back to Jones. Lawyer thought about a three. Now with one dribble, pull up, one go, and rebound to Nebraska. Toby Naga with it. Up ahead to Gary. Can't get the shot to go. Put back. And he was fouled. But Jawan Gary, no rebounds in that loss at Wisconsin. This is a guy that's had in a game with 18. A win against Kansas State. So he's got to get back to, to living on the glass. Last three games, only a rebound per game. Here's that spin move by Rink Mass. Nice job of just catching that early. Zach Eady not cutting off the baseline. Mass getting to the reverse layup. Call goes against Trey Kaufman. Wren. So just want Gary to the line. The coach was very clear about the message that he was giving Gary. He said, we're used to you being that dog on the board. Get in there and fight for some rebounds. Send him that text and wanted to challenge him again to get those numbers up in the rebound department. Well, you're talking about a guy that's six in the Big Ten Conference in offensive rebounds per game. I mentioned the 18 rebound effort against Kansas State. Just having no rebounds is is not acceptable regardless of foul trouble and he's really battled fouls got eight fouls in the last two games but he's gonna be that guy that gives max effort sure he's gonna score some too but they need him and playing his role at the highest level 6-0 nebraska run lawyer three ball open nice movement offensively shot will go and possession back to Nebraska. So far, Purdue just ice cold from three. Getting some good looks off the post double, but unable to capitalize. So Minaga, and that ball is out of bounds. Possession back to Purdue as he was trying to get it to Williams and could not successfully do so. It is eight. Who's off to a great start here tonight at 12 and nine. So you look at those guys, the productivity, and then C.J. Wilcher having a nice year. There's just a lot of nice pieces. With this Nebraska group and the start they've gotten off to Purdue over for six from the field early a hard Ball there no call goes with it as Mason Gillis checks in for Purdue and Purdue Offensively continues to struggle hey, You're right Fletcher Lawyer went down in a big way and, and we got and some Painter, blood here and Painter wants to talk about it the face of mast Looks like his nose is bloodied. You see him blinking with his eyes watering as well. Got blood on the back of his shorts. Josiah Alec checks in and mass seven points, three or four from the field. Oh, that man. three pointer as well. Head to head right there. Fletcher Lawyer going down, rink mass getting the brunt of that. See him cleaning up his nose. Medical team can't work fast enough over there with the hot start that he has had. Yeah, Mass just ne he never saw him and turned his head, and as he did it, and Fletcher Lawyer just well, that hurts both ways. Both those guys. That's thankfully they're okay. CJ Wilcher take it out for Nebraska. He has been shooting the basketball lights out of late. Back to his sophomore year level. You know, last year, a little bit of a regression as a shooter, but he has been fantastic this season. Tough shot here, won't go. That's Bryce Williams off the mark. Braden Smith with it. Edie calling for the basketball. Double team there on. Him. He's got Lewis got to shoot the ball. He's wide open. Purdue just having a hard time hanging on to it right now. Now Williams trying to get it down inside. Basketball is loose and then secured by Nebraska before they gave it away. Trying to go cross court and Fletcher Lawyer there for the interception. Thought about a three, instead drops it into Edie and a call on that spot is going to go against Josiah Alec. Easier said than done, but Alec needs to push Zach Edie off that. A charge arc really you let him get you that deep and it, it's game over he takes a foul and that saves a bucket 
Nice job by Purdue. You throw it in from the top of the key, and it just makes it to where there's no weak side. You can't post traps. So Purdue will be well served to throw it in from right there. There's Smith trying a three, and that is right on the money. And Heidi takes a seat. Camp Heidi into the game, excuse me, a lawyer will take a seat for Purdue. Nice decision there by Ethan Morton. Nebraska showing so much respect to Edie and Braden Smith all by himself. Now Williams with it. Get the basketball back from Gary. Williams, top three, won't go, easy rebound for Purdue. Back to back tough shots for Bryce Williams. That ball's got to move. Just him trying to make some isolation plays. Gillis wants the three. Beautiful shot. But got to find him. Mason Gillis now seven of his last 12 from three. Nebraska falling asleep on some of these shooters. And this Purdue offense waking up. And now Nebraska has got a case of the turnovers themselves. There's been a bit of sloppy offensive basketball early on in this game. But you mentioned Gillis. 53% from deep. 16 of 30 on the year. Not bad numbers. Mason Gillis always brings it. He lives on the offensive glass, shoots a high percentage from three, plays with a real level of toughness, and he was really good in that Illinois win as well. Eight and eight, and five offensive rebounds. Mass checks back into the game after getting some medical attention. Inside the Edie, that is Mass on him defensively. He's able to come down with the rebound. Looks like Edie almost double clutched on that shot. I think he's just going to turn, go right up, and, and score the ball. Nebraska once again showing multiple defenders at the reigning national player of the year. Back to Alec. Now Mass with the Edie on Mass. Smooth finish. By Wilcher. That's a great cut by C.J. Wilcher. Just coming right over the top, rubs his man off on Rick Mast, and Mast with that skill level just drops it off with the bounce pass. Smith thought about a pull up, and then he will take the shot. It's off the mark. Edie trying to reach over and grab the rebound, while sliding out of bounds to try to get a hand on it is Heidi, and unable to secure that possession. It'll go back to Nebraska. <laughs> CJ Wilcher, he's right here. As this ball gets to rink mask, he's just gonna rub him right to the rim. A really good cut. Here's the high post feed, and here he goes. And this is where and it's tough for Zach Eady because Mass can just step back and make that shot. So he's got to be there to at least contest. But that allows the cut there by Wilcher to get all the way to the basket. So first we'll check in as Edie takes a rest. Now, Wilcher, pull up. Was it a tip or was it a foul? They're going to say he got some contact on the way through. Ethan Morton trailing the play. Let's see if he gets ball or he gets arm here. Tough to tell from that angle. He couldn't believe it, but C.J. Wilcher going to go to the foul line for two. Wilcher, 88%. Free throw shooter, the transfer from Xavier three years ago, had a season high 18 points in South Carolina State back at the end of December. To the corner, open three, and the hot man stays hot at Mason Gillis. Well, that's a high level pass, though, from Braden Smith. He comes off that ball screen and just rockets that thing on a frozen rope to Gillis. Mason Gillis heating up, Purdue finding the stroke. And timeout on the floor. So Purdue starting to get themselves going offensively after a slow start thanks to Mason. He stuffed up his nose just to try to stop the bleeding and he was quickly back out onto the court. Tough guy with a nice start to this game. Mass with it. He's going to take it inside. He's looking for Lawrence on the roll. It's tipped up in the air. Now Lawrence able to secure it. 
But Mask, you've got to be aware. He loves to fake the dribble handoff and then just take it to the rim. Pass inside to Alec, back out to Mask, who has a wide open three, and that time rattles it out. This is Jones. Now Jones gives it back up. Heidi inside. Gillis. Tough shot. Won't go. Put back and one for first. Checked into the game to give Edie a blow. First. Try to finish off the end one. Well, Caleb first, no points the last two games. And this reason right this play right here is the reason why turnovers are such a killer for this Purdue team. You know, top 20 nationally in offensive rebound percentage. Mason Gillis not known for his back to the basket game, but just getting it up on the rim. The help comes over with the trap. That allows Caleb first to go to work on the offensive glass. Now Purdue with a 14-12 lead. Mass trying to just get rid of the basketball. But we knock out from deep off the mark. Well, Purdue fortunate there. That screen picked the primary defender off, and Purdue just late getting out there to Kase Tominaga. Nice deflection defensively. Now Nebraska on the oh. run and just threw this basketball up into the stands. Tominaga calling for the ball. Could get it. We've seen from both these teams some baffling passes here tonight to start this game. This Lance Jones bring it up for Purdue. Gillis thought about it inside to Caleb first back outside to Gillis and that three pointers short off the mark put back is there That's Heidi with the board the put back and that's gonna be the game for Nebraska Can you keep Purdue off the offensive glass and it's not just Zach Eady first Heidi Gillis all three of those guys on the floor right now are gonna go every time a shot goes up Mass drops the basketball off and tries to set a screen to set up their offensive star. Tony Naga gives it back up. Mass, right left hand finish. He is such a tough guard for any big out on the perimeter. You can put it on the floor and there just whips Caleb first right off the bounce and gets to his left hand. Jones swinging around. Heidi trying to drive baseline back to Gillis. He's been looking to shoot and Gillis. Nothing but net. I think one of the questions for this Purdue team is how did the second unit score? And right now, the second unit for Purdue pushing this out to a five point lead. And Matt Painter getting some real contributions. And Mason Gillis continues to stay on fire. Mass, he's like this matchup. <laughs> nice little finish there. Left foot, right hand. Off the glass. A little half hook there from Wake Mass. He's shown off the total package. Inside, shown the three, now going to the hook. He has been fantastic for Nebraska to start this game. Jones to Gillis, pump fake, wide open. Shot low, go rebound, Mass. Finally, Nebraska, they've gotten some stops, but haven't been able to close down possessions. They're a defensive board to get them out here and, and play in the open court. Lawrence back to Mass, and that shot won't go. Up ahead on the drive and a foul call. That was Gillis taking the basketball to the hoop. Contact on the way there. How good has Mason Gillis been? Gonna have two free throws coming up, but already nine points, has knocked down three threes. That was a long run. He gets away. Kase Tominaga trying to rotate over. And here's Rink Mass. This is an impressive finish. A little half hook. Caleb first does a pretty good job staying in front, but Mass showing off that touch. Gillis, who is an 87% free throw shooter, unable to get it to go. And subs come in. That's Lawyer as well as Smith checking into the game. The Boilermakers. Second one is good. And now Gillis 
will head over toward the bench. And that's Kaufman Wren who comes in for him. Kaufman Wren, leading scorer last game, put up season high 23 points against Illinois back on January the 5th. Williams, tough shot, contested three. You already know it's down. Toby not gets fired up. That's a tough action for Purdue to guard. Lance Jones in a real predicament. You got Tommy Naga raising behind the play, a little pick and roll. He's got to be in to stop that big, but then has to get out. And Tommy Naga making him pay for it from that left wing. There's contact. It looks like it's right there with Edie and Tommy Naga, who's raising his hand up and saying. That one's on me as he was down there defensively on Edie. A little bit of a quiet start here for Kasey, but he's finding the range here. Lance Jones late on the closeout. Tominaga bottoms from three. Wednesday, spend the night. Trap in, baby. With family. I just think that Nebraska is showing him the ultimate respect. You know, they're having two and th sometimes three defenders around him at all times. They're making Purdue skip the basketball and making other guys prove it. Now Edie calling for the rock. Big fella throws it down. What an inbounds play right there. A little back screen action. Zach Edie just peeling off and Purdue throwing it up top. The easiest look of the night. Now Lawrence. Down inside. Taking the time offense. The 10 on the shot clock. Baseline jumper won't go and the board. To Edie. But Purdue did that a lot against Illinois, and it's really something that Nebraska's done for the last couple of years, where they've just gotten on top of post players and brought that double from the bottom side. Jones over a lawyer. And a foul call. It's Josiah Alex, who is defending down low. Here's that little screen. Braden Smith just getting a piece. Passes right there. Edie goes up for it. Take him to the basketball and then just roll on him. Nice pass and certainly nice play design by Purdue out of the timeout. And for Edie, that was his first bucket. And now to the free throw line. Here we go. A shot off the mark. And you don't see that all the time because he is a good free throw shooter for a big man. 75%. He was over for three, though, against Illinois. So he's missed his last four. Here's Williams. Now look at that. Look at sizing the him up. That he's got to just go play. But this round won by Edie with that length and size. Smith back outside the lawyer. Edie calling for the basketball. Fun matchup inside for him and Mass. Now the three ball comes up just short and battling for the rebound is Nebraska and the call goes against Edie and the crowd is loving it. That was a big boy rebound right there by Bryce Williams. He came flying in. This is going to be Mast and Edie going for it, but Williams making a play on the ball. As this shot goes up, you see Mast fighting for his life and look at where Williams comes from. There's the contact and... Bryce Williams drawing what's certainly a very important first foul. Something to watch for the next 6.22. Purdue 4 for 11. A deep range so far. Gillis 3 for 5 off the bench. Behind the three-point arc. Now Mass kicks it back outside. Tommy Naga. One more pass. And this shot is off the mark from Gary. So far, Purdue's defense has been pretty locked in. They've taken away those rink mass fake DHOs to the rim, and they've done a really nice job on Kasey Tominaga off the basketball, just staying right there with him. Lawyer gets it up. Inside to Edie. Edie left it well short. The second air ball we've seen from him on a similar looking shot. He's really fading away from the basket on some of these post ups. Sure is. Deep shot is good from the lawyer, though, who's trying to get himself going from deep range. We've talked about it. He's been massive against Nebraska. 24 game last year in those two. Has been liking it from deep. He's going to have those opportunities with Edie on the floor. Purdue, it will be interesting to see if he makes a couple more. Does Matt Painter start rotating to him? But Edie's in that drop, so Matt will have looks from three. 
22, Purdue. Smith over to Lawyer. Gets it right back. Now Lawyer drives baseline. Pull up, let go, and the rebound. Back to the Huskers. They can run with it. Kominaga, left hand, short, and the board is battled for the possession will stay. I love the pressure that Nebraska putting on Purdue right there. Bryce Williams could have dribbled it up, but instead he's thrown it ahead to Tominaga. Usually Tominaga is so effective in transition. Almost 60% from the field when he gets out there in the open floor. That's Lance Jones who checks back in for the Boilermakers. Braden Smith will take a seat. Tominaga trying to make up for it. That's how you do it. That's off the screens, and Ethan Morton is right there with them. Pretty good defense, but just better offense from a guy that's now made eight threes in the last three games. Mass is pumping up the crowd as he comes out to defend Edie. Lawyer to Gillis. He's been hot. Stays hot. And a roll and replace action. Mason Gillis is wide open. Nebraska showing Edie the ultimate respect on those rolls. And there are opportunities for other guys tonight for Purdue to make plays. Kominaga back out for a reset with 12 on the shot clock. And Purdue switched five ways here. We'll see if Bryce Williams can make something of this matchup. Williams gives it up. Juan Gary into the paint and Gary and one. Another foul against Zach Eady. And what an answer from Nebraska. Purdue with that second unit that pushed out the lead. Tommy Naga always. Eady 14 points, 6 of 10 from the field. You look at his best games on the year 19 at, at Kansas State. Right before he had that knee procedure, 20 against Florida A&M, 19 against Cal State Fullerton, but it's a different deal doing it against the number one team in the country and a guy like Zach Eady. Moving around pretty good after that knee procedure, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. He has come back fast and certainly his last couple games playing some of his best basketball. A lawyer baseline in the lead through the contact. Nebraska with that no middle defense, so you're going to get drives on that baseline. Usually Nebraska's help defense pretty good at coming over and stopping the ball outside the paint, but that drive a little bit late, and Fletcher Lawyer once again earns a trip to the line. Call goes against Jawan Gary. And checking in for Nebraska is Sam Hoiberg. And talking to Purdue today at shoot around, I, I think. These players and the coaching staff understood what kind of dogfight they were going to have on their hands. Last year's game, a big-time atmosphere. And with this group that Fred Hoiberg's assembled, the snowstorm has certainly diminished the crowd, maybe a little bit students still on break, but this place rocks as good as just about anywhere in this league. Hoiberg kicks it, three ball, did not touch the rim. Toby Naka. Lance Jones, he, he, he can't go removed on KC Tominaga. He, he will make you pay for it every time. One of the most electric players in this league. He can get this crowd into it. He's done it. You see Jones just going removed here on the screen. Even though that's got a ton of space, it's still too much for KC Tominaga. Tominaga still firing up the crowd on the defensive end of the court. Now he comes out defensively on lawyer shot. Won't go. Rebound. Mast was there. They're going to say possession will stay with Purdue. You can see that Jones gets there, but still, you just, you've got to lock and trail. You can't go under on any screen that's being set for him. Smith over the lawyer, kick it down. To the corner for a three, and this time possession as Nebraska's way. There's no doubt with the help that Nebraska's showing, they're going to make Purdue prove it from three. 15 of Purdue's 25 field goal attempts have been from the perimeter. They are taking away that paint, making them a jump shooting team. Matt Painter brought Ethan Morton up to bring him into the game. Back 
down is totally Atlas does. Take that. With good players, you can't let them get their head up, which Tominaga now has. He is on fire. It's stolen away on the run. Sam Hoiberg to the rim, and Hoiberg does it all. to the third team but he's just he's one of the most fun players to watch in college basketball when he's got it going like he does tonight he can be electric from anywhere Smith to Gillis Gillis now drops it down inside the foul is called there it was mass defensively it was that Williams that reached in we will see it was the right call. They're going to get Bryce Williams here for reaching in. And he just sideswipes Trey Kaufman Wren. I think Purdue, just with the amount of threes that they've taken, they only take 21 a game on the year, which is ninth in the Big Ten, 218th in college basketball. Already are at 15 attempts. So I think that they're going to have to really look at halftime. I'm not saying you're turning down wide open ones, but they want to find some opportunities in the painted area. Williams takes a seat and Jamarcus Lawrence checks in for Nebraska and a foul call again off the ball. That's going to go against Ethan Morton. Well, Purdue was just out of sorts there as the ball came to them. Having a hard time matching up. Mason Gillis and Braden Smith were, were a little bit confused and Ethan Morton late getting to this guy right here. Kobe Naga eating up. One more pass. Sam Hoiberg's been making it happen on the defensive end, turns defense into offense with a three ball. That's another breakdown by Purdue. Now you have to run at Tominaga and Sam Hoiberg having a great year shooting the ball. 38% from three. Now Gillis thought about it. One more dribble and that shot off to Mark Tominaga is battling for the rebound with Hoiberg. Once he crosses half court, Tommy Naga, he is in range and he is hunting shots right now. Sure is. Hoiberg on the drive. Reverse <laughs> Sam Hoiberg, he knows. Coach's kid knows the game extremely well. The walk on. So he is earning these minutes. Deep shot for Purdue trying to answer won't go. Rebound Nebraska trying to throw it all the way down court. Was that touched by a lawyer? Ref says yes. Possession to Nebraska. Well, you see the miscommunication. Ethan Morton, Trey Kaufman, Wren get their signals crossed. And we've got to rotate. Sam Hoiberg, what a sequence he has. Now driving the ball. This is an area where last year he finished at a really high clip. This season, you know, from two, not nearly as high. 63 last year, just 40 this season. But that one counts there. A circus reverse layup with the right hand. Nebraska has made their last seven field goals. 13-0 run there on. Here's Hoiberg. C.J. Wilcher. Mass going to work. Left hand won't go. Rebound to Purdue. Nice job by Gillis there. Just never gave ground. And made Mass take a tough off balance hook. With 13 seconds of the half. Mass got a hand on it defensively. Great Smith. With a kick. Wide open three. And that is long. You think this crowd's having fun yet? <laughs> I would say. That's as quiet of a half as we've seen from Zach Eady this season, or I would even go back to last. And give Fred Hoiberg and his staff a lot of credit. Last year, Eady only averaged 11 points a game, only took 14 shots. So they've done a nice job over the course of these last two seasons just limiting his looks. This is poked away defensively. Purdue had zero points the last 336. Missed their first six field goals as well. So a uncharacteristic offensive performance at half number one is masked. Heads into the paint on Edie at this time. A defensive win for Edie. Good job moving his feet and still contesting that shot from Mast. Purdue got open looks from three, but 
Nebraska certainly selling out on their paint defense to take away the two. This is Mason Gillis. And they were catch it cleanly. Now Smith. Edie heads into the post. And that pass got caught up in the net and unable to get across the defense of Nebraska. I haven't seen a ton of pick and roll there, but Braden Smith leaving his feet. That's when he can get himself in some trouble. He's turned it over too much over the last six games. And a foul on the rebound. You see the ref saying, we're going to take another look at this. We're going to review exactly what happened down low. Gary hit the deck hard. It was that Mason Gillis who was there to provide the contact? Yes, it was. He went to block. <laughs> I would say there's some contact there. He went to block out, and certainly with Jawan Gary, that's a physical player. Mason Gillis really lowering that shoulder and knocking him out of bounds. Well, the second the ref called the foul, he immediately said, no, I'm going to take one did. more look at this, did he? And I, you know, with this rule, it's always is it a dangerous play? Is it a basketball play? There's a good chance, I think, with the way the rule is written, that this is this could be upgraded to a flagrant one. Especially with what we've seen over the course of the last week, where flagrants have certainly played a role in some of these games. Just told us that they're obviously looking for a flagrant one. And for Gillis, 13 points, four of eight from deep. And he's been playing well offensively. Meet the criteria for you. I mean, to me, that's just. I would say, and this, I don't want to sound like I come from the '90s NBA here. I would be fine with this just being a common foul, but I think that with the way the rule is written, that this has a very good chance of being upgraded to a flagrant one. There you go. Trying to sound like Xavier McDaniel from the the '90s Knicks here. I Charles say, Oakley. I do miss those '90s no. NBA days you were describing there. But I, I do think that the with the way the rule is written, you could certainly say that that's an excessive blockout. I would not be surprised to see this be a flagrant one. It's a bit of a blind side shot. Yeah, I mean, Juwan Gary, is, he's trying to get to the rim. Mason Gillis just kind of lowers his shoulder. Whatever they will decide, they're taking a good long look at this to determine the outcome. And unnecessary was the word that the referee used. Yeah, and M Mason Gillis is looking to block out, which obviously is a basketball play. But I guess if you, you look at the, the level of contact, I think it's one of those things, too, where if Juwan Gary maybe sees him coming, he doesn't go flying the way that he does, and then it's just a common foul. But the result of the play and the way the rule is written, I can see why the refs upgraded that to a flagrant one. Sometimes there's something about shooting free throws by yourself. It seems to make it a little bit tougher, isn't it? Yes, it can be a lonely place with the uh, technical or flagrance. First one off the mark, and so too is the second. After all that, a little smile there from Mason Gillis over toward the referee and the basketball back in play. Last one's a three. Off the mark, rebound, Gillis. And he's really playing off him. We saw Wisconsin do that. He ended up two of seven from three in that game on Saturday. Rolling the dice a little bit because he was making shots in the first half. Inside to Edie. They've been sending a lot of defenders his direction and a whistle almost as soon as he caught it. I will be shocked, Jack if we don't see a ton of middle post-ups for Zach Eady here. And that's exactly what this is. Roll and replace, pop Mason Gillis out to that top of the key, and then you duck Zach Eady in. There's just no help side to come from. They can certainly send a double, but there's going to be some wide open people in, in the vicinity of Eady if you do it. Paul, when it gets masked, that's his first. And now again, Eady gets 
gets the basketball, and there is more contact on him. And it's Jamarcus Lawrence, the guilty party. Oh, he'd be really off balance there. Jamarcus Lawrence coming with that double team. Looked like Tim Como was about to call a travel, and Rob Riley overruled him. Jones on the drive. Jones, good hard take. I think Purdue's going to have to see some of that as well. Their guards not just settling for threes, but they're Lance Jones putting it on the floor and getting all the way to the rack. Lance Jones, a transfer from Southern Illinois. Now Lawrence off the mark. Heidi with the board. Oh, Lawrence, he's almost been a non-factor tonight. That's his first shot attempt. Does have three rebounds, but tough spot for him trying to play that one. Pull up jumper from Smith. That just wasn't there for him either. And he's been so effective coming off pick and roll to get to his spot and raise up. Purdue showing some life here and finally finding some two point field goal attempts. Mass tried to sneak one through and that was blocked away by Lance Jones defensively. This is Hoiberg who's checking back into the game. It was really a hot end to the half. For Sam Hoiberg, defensively and offensively. He's a spark plug for this group and it was last year and this season certainly once again. Nice inbounds play. What a screen. That is Gary with the finish through the contact. Well, screen for the screener is used by just about everybody. Look at Casey Tomanaga. He wants to set this and then he is going to come out here. But with the back screen open, he doesn't have to do it. Mason Gillis gets picked off. You're worried about Casey. It ends up being a three-point play for Jawan Gary at the basket. So it's a 10-point Nebraska lead. Smith to Edie and right back to Smith. Now Edie trying to work the post. And Mast has been all effort defensively down there on. Right. The cylinder rule has gone out the window with, the, with our post trapping. Now, I'm okay with that. I think the rule stinks anyway, but you can see it. It's supposed to be you have this invisible cone around you as you post up. Very physical here. Mass fighting for his life. Edie's trying to get position. But, I mean, that, that body bump to me is a foul. And if you don't call the first one, that's... Certainly one of those things where Rink Mast is trying to be physical, but he got away with one there. Gillis thought about a three. One more pass over to Jones, and Jones buries it. Lance Jones playing with so much confidence. Three of the last four games, double figures. A guy that can get hot from the perimeter, but got himself going here in this second half with the layup. His threes are going to be there for Purdue. We'll see if they can knock some of them down here in the second half. Toby Naga can get going offensively at half number two, and he just threw this basketball away as he tried to sneak it through to Mast. I want to remind you the Dolphins and the Chiefs stream the biggest game of Super Wild Card Weekend Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and that is exclusively on Peacock. Jones lost one up in the air, poked away. Nice defensive play by Bryce Williams. Now Williams, defense to offense, into the paint, he rolls. A turnover haunting Purdue once again. Bryce Williams, aggressive in transition. That little Euro step getting to the other side of the rim, even with Zach Eady looming. Jones wants a three. He is keeping Purdue in this game. Here's Jones just making things happen, making plays by himself. Now get thought about it over to Mass. Now gets it back. Seven on the shot clock. Tommy Naga breaking his own shot, left it well. Short. I, I thought he got fouled shooting that thing. I thought Mason Gillish hit him on that shooting arm. He did too as he makes his case back down the court, and Braden Smith puts a three down. as quiet of a half as we've seen from Zach Eady this season or I would even go back to last and give Fred Hoiberg and his staff a lot of credit last year Eady only averaged 11 points a game only took 14 shots so they've done a nice job over the course of these last two seasons just limiting his looks this is 
poked away defensively. And Purdue had zero points the last 336. Missed their first six field goals as well. So a uncharacteristic offensive performance at half number one is masked. Heads into the paint on Edie at this time. A defensive win for Edie. Good job moving his feet and still contesting that shot from Mast. And Purdue got open looks from three, but Nebraska certainly selling out on their paint defense to take away the two. This is Mason Gillis. And they will catch it cleanly. Now Smith. Edie heads into the post. And that pass got caught up in the net and unable to get across the defense of Nebraska. I haven't seen a ton of pick and roll there, but Braden Smith leaving his feet. That's when he can get himself in some trouble. He's turned it over too much over the last six games. And a foul on the rebound. You see the ref saying, we're going to take another look at this. We're going to review exactly what happened down low. Gary hit the deck hard. Was that Mason Gillis who was there to provide the contact? Yes, it was. He went to. <laughs> I would say there's some contact there. He went to block out, and certainly with Jawan Gary, that's a physical player. Mason Gillis really lowering that shoulder and knocking him out of bounds. Well, the second the ref called the foul, he immediately said, no, "I'm going to take one did. more look at this, Denny." You know, with this rule, it's. Always is it a dangerous play? Is it a basketball play? There's a good chance, I think, with the way the rule is written, that this is this could be upgraded to a flagrant one. Especially with what we've seen over the course of the last week, where flagrants have certainly played a role in some of these games. Just told us that they're obviously looking for a flagrant one. And for Gillis, 13 points, four of eight from deep. He's been playing well offensively. To meet the criteria for you? I mean, to me, that's just, I would say, and this, I don't want to sound like I come from the 90s NBA here. I would be fine with this just being a common foul. But I think that with the way the rule is written, that this has a very good chance of being upgraded to a flight of one. There you go. Trying to sound like Xavier McDaniel from the, the 90s Knicks here. I Charles say, I do miss those 90s no. NBA days you were describing there. But I, I do think that with the, the, the way the rule is written, you could certainly say that that's an excessive lockout. And I, I would not be surprised to see this be a flagrant one. It's a bit of a blindside shot. Yeah, I mean, Juan Gary, is, he's trying to get to the rim. Mason Gillis just kind of lowers his shoulder. Whatever they will decide, they're taking a good long look at this to determine the outcome. Necessary was the word that the referee used. Yeah, and Mason Gillis is looking to block out, which obviously is a basketball play. But I guess if you look at the the level of contact, I think it's one of those things too, where if Juwan Gary maybe sees him coming, he doesn't go flying the way that he does, and then it's just a common foul. But the result of the play and the way the rule is written, I can see why the refs upgraded that to a flagrant one. Sometimes there's something about shooting free throws by yourself. It seems to make it a little bit tougher, isn't it? Yes, it can be a lonely place with the uh, technical or flagrance. First one off the mark, and so too is the second. After all that, a little smile there for Mason Gillis over toward the referee, and the basketball back in play. Mast wants a three. Off the mark, rebound, Gillis. And he's really playing off him. We saw Wisconsin do that. He ended up two of seven from three in that game on Saturday. Rolling the dice a little bit because he was making shots in the first half. Inside to Edie. They've been sending a lot of defenders his direction and a whistle 
tackles as soon as he got it. I will be shocked, Jack, if we don't see a ton of middle post-ups for Zach Eady here. And that's exactly what this is. Roll and replace, pop Mason Gillis out to that top of the key, and then you duck Zach Eady in. There's just no help sign to come from. They can certainly send a double, but there's going to be some wide open people in, in the vicinity of Edie if you do it. Paul, when it gets mashed, that's his first. And now again, Edie gets the basketball, and there is more contact on him. And it's Jamarcus Lawrence, the guilty party. Well, Edie really off balance there. Jamarcus Lawrence coming with that double team. Looked like Tim Como was about to call a travel, and Rob Riley overruled him. Jones on the drive. Jones, good hard take. I think Purdue's going to have to see some of that as well. Their guards not just settling for threes, but they're Lance Jones putting it on the floor and getting all the way to the rack. Lance Jones, a transfer from Southern Illinois. Now Lawrence off the mark. Heidi with the board. Oh, Lawrence, he's almost been a non-factor tonight. That's his first shot attempt. Does have three rebounds, but tough spot for him trying to play that one. Pull up jumper from Smith. That just wasn't there for him either. And he's been so effective coming off pick and roll to get to his spot and raise up. Purdue showing some life here and finally finding some two point field goal attempts. Bass tried to sneak one through and that was blocked away by Lance Jones defensively. This is Hoiberg who's checking back into the game. It was really a hot end to the half for Sam Hoiberg defensively and offensively. He's a spark plug for this group and was last year and this season certainly once again nice inbounds play what a screen that is Gary with the finish through the contact well screen for the screener is used by just about everybody look at Casey Tomanaga he wants to set this and then he is going to come out here but with the back screen open, he doesn't have to do it. Mason Gillis gets picked off. You're worried about Casey. It ends up being a three-point play for Jawan Gary at the basket. So it's a 10-point Nebraska lead. Smith to Edie and right back to Smith. Now Edie trying to work the post. And Mast has been all effort defensively down there on right. The cylinder rule has gone out the window with, the, with our post traffic. Now, I'm okay with that. I think the rule stinks anyway, but you can see it. It's supposed to be you have this invisible cone around you as you post up. Very physical here. Mass fighting for his life. Edie's trying to get position. But, I mean, that, that body bump to me is a foul. And if you don't call the first one, that's... Certainly one of those things where Rink Mast is trying to be physical, but he got away with one there. Gillis thought about a three. One more pass over to Jones, and Jones buries it. Lance Jones playing with so much confidence. Three of the last four games, double figures. A guy that can get hot from the perimeter, but got himself going here in this second half with the layup. His threes are going to be there for Purdue. We'll see if they can knock some of them down here in the second half. Toby Naga can get going offensively at half number two, and he just threw this basketball away as he tried to sneak it through to Mast. I want to remind you the Dolphins and the Chiefs stream the biggest game of Super Wild Card Weekend Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and that is exclusively on Peacock. Jones lost one up in the air, poked away. Nice defensive play by Bryce Williams. Now Williams, defense to offense, into the paint, he rolls. A turnover haunting Purdue once again. Bryce Williams, aggressive in transition. That little Euro step, getting to the other side of the rim. Even with Zach Eady looming. Jones wants a three. He is keeping Purdue in this game. Bryce Jones just making things happen, making plays by himself. Now I thought about it over to Mass. Now gets it back. Seven on the shot clock. Tommy Naga breaking his own shot, left it well short. I, I thought he got fouled shooting that thing. I thought Mason Gillis hit him on that shooting arm. He 
chipped in too as he makes his case back down the court and Braden Smith puts a three down. Tap as well as he now heads to the line. Purdue has made some of these open threes that Nebraska is willing to give up and then I do think that Purdue's guards have done a better job in this second half both Lance Jones and Braden Smith of driving the basketball getting into the teeth of that defense and finishing at the rim Smith from Westfield, Indiana terrific sophomore along with Fletcher Lawyer so Quickly a one-point game Contact called on the screen. To go against Purdue, that's Heidi. He's trying to battle his way through it. He's chasing CJ Wilcher, and there's just some contact there. I think Matt Painter will take fouls like that, though. He, he wants these guys to be physical and certainly staying on some of these Nebraska shooters. A struggle for Purdue at times in the first half. Rake mast inside kicks it outside corner three. You better believe it for Sia Allen. What a big bucket for Nebraska. Last two games, he's only scored six points, shooting 27% from three. Edie playing off, and Alec making a big one from the corner. Edie trying to calm things down. That'll do it. And that post entry pass is just a rocket right into him. And when he gets to his left shoulder, you know, good luck. He was decisive on that play. He got exactly what he wanted quickly. That's Cam Heidi. He fouled CJ Wilcher on that shot. Couple of quick fouls there on Heidi. Wilcher was trying to rise and shoot. Here's the Alec three, and you can see Edie is just gonna play in and dare Alec to shoot it. And watch Cam Heidi here. He just bumps into him. It's definitely gonna be a foul every time. Two fouls now on Heidi. Send Wiltshire to the line, 88% free throw shooter. 6'5, 214 pound junior transfer Xavier two years ago. Heidi will take a seat with those two quick fouls. Jones wants a three, won't go. That's Nebraska and Lawrence on the run. Outside, Alec. Good Alec job by Alec of not losing his mind. You made one, but moved the ball. And look at what happened for CJ Wilcher on the backside. So Wilcher, who is lining up three throws, this time gets a clean look and knocks it down. Now score defensively. Hoiberg on the run. Hoiberg, easy left hand finish. That's the second time that we've seen Sam Hoiberg just make a big time defensive play. He's shooting right to the passing lanes and it's off to the races. And I look back to that Michigan State game where he locked down Tyson Walker the last four minutes to seal that win for Nebraska. He's been terrific tonight. That defense and offense on display. Nebraska eight steals. Purdue just one. Trying to get rid of the basketball was he able to they say possession will stay and Nebraska just in full rotation mode there taking away eating rotating off the ball Fletcher lawyer Now two for his last 14 dating back to Illinois Edie was calling for the basketball and had it hit right off his hands and out of bounds and bounce that went right through his hands and hit him in the head The pass was right there It's a good look Entry from the top there, and you don't see that very often. Alec gives it up. Three ball pure. But CJ Wilcher set a great back screen. That, that opened up to the, the defense. Had to loosen because of the cut, and then he is wide open coming off the handoff. 
And it's poked away again on the defensive end by a Hoiberg, and then a call is called on Lawrence. And you mentioned C.J. Wilcher on fire from deep, 11 threes the last four games. Well, he's going to set this back screen right here for Jamarcus Lawrence, and Lawrence is going to take it all the way to the rim. There's the screen, and now he's coming off the handoff. We're a little bit late. And Nebraska, what an answer that they have had to this Purdue second half run. Lawyer wide open, see if he can get himself going. That will help. Well, had to have it. Good pass out from Zach Eady. They're cracking down on the backside. Lawyer is wide open. The lead is 10. Now Gary drives the backboard, unable to get it to go. Board goes to Eady. Now this is Smith. Drops it off to Jones. Eady somehow able to grab it and stuff. That was fortunate there for Purdue. That, that pass tipped. I think that was intended for Trey Kaufman Wren. Ends up in the hands of Edie and gets it right there. Nice pull up. A little short and rims out. Another rebound for Edie. Now Jones. Jones lost the basketball. He was fouled. The crowd doesn't like it, but that, that's the right call. You got Alec late moving his feet. There was certainly contact with Lance Jones driving it. And you see Wilcher getting down on Trey Kaufman Wren, and that leaves Fletcher Lawyer the backside. When that pass is a bullet out, it's going to be a tough guard. There's that deflection. Zach Eady, fortunate, ends up in his hands, and he finishes the job with the slam. So that's three of Josiah Alec and Rick Mass, as well as Bryce Williams, check into the game for Nebraska. Edy out to set a screen. Calling for the ball in the roll. Jones. That's short. Board goes to Smith. Drops it off to Edy. Edy is fouled on the way there, and he wanted to make that shot too. Unable to do so. Head to the line for two. How about the smallest guy on the floor for Purdue just hanging around and chasing that offensive rebound down? That three from Lance Jones, one of those that caroms wildly, and Braden Smith just chases it and finds the big fella, sets him up. And you see no block out there by Bryce Williams. The call goes against Alec. Once again, that'll be his fourth. And he'll take a seat as Juwan Gary checks in. About the demeanor on the face. Of Edie as you hear this crowd. He didn't care. I don't, think he, I don't think he minds the air ball chain. He, he is locked in right here. How has he been able to get himself going here a little bit offensively? Well, the, the offensive glass, some of these duck ins, he's, he's gotten to that left shoulder. And when he does that, it, it's, it's normally not good for the defense. Free throw rattles out. Gary back to Williams. Now Wiltshire. Got the matchup inside, but instead Bryce Williams. Three ball says it matter. Do it all myself. Said, I got the matchup on the outside. Lead is still at 10. Lawyer floats one. Edie with it. They're going to call a foul on the floor. That's going to go against C.J. Wilcher coming over to help on Edie. So you got the in, the inside matchup with Braden Smith, but Bryce Williams also has it with Edie on the perimeter. He just backs him up, rises and fires. He just showed the replay here. Uh, <laughs> the Nebraska crowd not too pleased. Edie was fortunate because he caught that pass. He doesn't do this very often, but he brought it down. Where those guards can swipe it. Now the crowd back into it, feeling as if they helped him miss his last free throw, but he buries this one and quiets him down. You see him bring this down. There certainly is some contact there. Wilcher hits him a little bit on the arm. 
Edie has 10 points. He scored 35 twice this year against Alabama and Northwestern. So he gets going offensively. He can really go. So now take a break. Pass, scanning, reading the defense. Now going to take it into the paint himself. Looking for that right hand. Tough shot. Good defense put on. Now a fight for that rebound and Purdue able to secure it. Frank Mast will put you in the spin cycle right there. Pretty good from Caleb first. Jones into the paint. And then first sealed off the defense there. Lance Jones just finding that seam. Purdue trying to grind away at this lead one more time. The shot off the mark won't go. Rebound being fought for, and they will say possession stays with Nebraska, who's off a boiler maker. That was an awesome pass from Rick Mass. That thing had some serious air underneath it. And he led Jawan Gary perfectly. Fletcher Lawyer did a nice job as that weak side defender coming over. But Mass can, can really give you fits with that five out. He, he can. Only pass. Lawyer takes a seat. Brayden Smith checks in. And that three ball checks in as well. CJ Wilcher cannot miss. Wilcher's pitching a perfect game. Four or four from the field, three up to three from three. Hasn't missed a free throw. Hasn't committed a turnover. Jones trying to return fire. Off the mark. Rebound. Rips back out to Smith. Now Smith with a tough shot on the baseline. It's off the mark, and the ball goes to Max. Coach Horberg was saying that he has never seen him this confident in his first miss of the night from CJ Wilcher, but the rebound down low by Rick Max. That rebound gets freed up because Caleb first is trying to get into the picture with Wilcher coming off the handoff Now that he's made these shots, you got to react to him accordingly and A little bit behind on the handoff you got first popping out to get a contest and there you get mass coming to the rim for the offensive glass Mason Gillis picks up his third Williams trying to come get it, lost his footing, and he will take a timeout wisely to maintain that possession. The 71. And a season high 13 out here tonight. How about the fact that seven different Nebraska players have made a three tonight? That is an incredible stat. Wilcher. Unable to get the finish, but a nice pass by Max. A bad gamble by Braden Smith. Really fortunate that Bryce Williams missed that layup. A Smith falling away. Hurst kicks it back to the corner. And Gillis, a 10 on the shot clock. Hurst out to set a screen. Smith takes his time, tries to go up and under, swing it across the court, and a tough shot is an air ball. What a defensive possession that was. That really was. Braden Smith trying to step through. He had a man on the back side, but it was behind him. He never saw Cam Heidi. Instead, he just lobs this thing up into no man's land. Excuse me, it was, it was Mason Gillis behind him. Heidi was at the rim. And just a miss here on the entry pass as Zach Eady checks back into the game. You saw Matt Painter immediately turn to the turn around and say, hey, it's time, big fella, and sent him right back to the score table. I still think Purdue can go to those post entries from the top. That's where they've been most successful tonight at getting Zach Eady the ball. Seven minutes to play. Look at C.J. Wilcher. He's just sitting in there. That's a, a bad pass from Lance Jones. Right on line with that pass, and it was well off the mark. Naga, he's been quiet in the second half. Gary, nice cut. 
Gary, nice finish. Lead is a Smith inside, nice dish over the Edie. He's passed there by Braden Smith, torched his man off the bounds, help came over and he dropped it off to Edie. Tominaka. That was Edie defending and the shot will not go. He thought he was fouled. And now late down the court. Oh, what a block. To do but swatted away. And Nebraska able to secure it. Lance Jones thought he had a layup and Jawan Gary had other ideas. Just put that thing on the glass. And a foul called on the ball by Lance Jones. This is first. And Nass there and Gary just flying into that screen. Timed it up, put it on the board, and Bryce Williams able to keep it in play. Williams drops it to Mast. Mast on Edie has not shied away from that, and this time Edie with another win on the defensive end. This was never on balance there. Smith walking into a three. Rebound still being fought for. Jones secures it to the corner. Three won't go. Edie tried to get the rebound. A foul call on that board. Gonna go against Edie. His third. Purdue has had some wide open looks from three. Bryce Williams blocking out. But I, I don't know. Not sure what he did there, but. To the line goes Bryce Williams. Grad transfer from Charlotte. A great addition. Nebraska that was the foul call right there I don't know about that one <laughs> Williams hit the first your Purdue how do you try to get yourself back into this thing now well with 530 you still have plenty of time you're gonna play through Zach Eady and certainly I think top of the key post entries are gonna get him he's got to get his man deep though hasn't been able to do that Eady out to set a screen he's picking rolls Nebraska's been really high with Braden Smith taking away that not, not playing drop coverage the pull-up hasn't been there Edie with the dribble out to Smith. And now Smith through contact, kicks it to the corner, and that three from the corner is money from Mason Gillis. A nice pass there by Braden Smith. Disadvantaged basketball. Could have taken that tough pull up, but instead had Mason Gillis wide open in the corner. Tobinaga on the cut, and he was hit. It's a smart play from K State Tominaga. Cam Heidi trying to be physical with them. Here's that play. Bryce Williams goes down. There's the assist to Mason Gillis in the corner. Cam Heidi picks up his third. And Tilly Naga to the free throw strike. Reshoots at 85%. It's the first points of the second half for Toby Naga. So Rank Mass will take a seat for the Huskers. Now Smith takes it back outside. Gillis over to Lawyer. Back to Smith. Pump fake gets him in the air. Lawyer wide open and Lawyer on the money. This game has been made for the three points. <laughs> we look at both these teams have made 13 threes each, 26 combined.
Alec gives it up. Kobe Naga, tough three. You better believe it. That was good defense by Cam Heidi, but Casey Tominaga is on fire. A lawyer trying to reverse it. He walked with it. How about the emotion from Tommy Naga? They've given up a lot of looks from three. Purdue's made 13. 60% of Purdue's shots on the night have been from that three-point line. And Nebraska's done a great job of defending without fouling. You know, Purdue is as good as any team in the country getting to the line. And only 11 of 15 from the foul line tonight. So they, they have drawn up a game plan that certainly has been the recipe so far to be up 10 with the, the, the under four beat the number one team in the country. Williams slips it through to Allen. Really a nice pass there from Williams. Crowd on their feet. Lawyers trying to drive. Lawyer through the contact, unable to get it to go on the board to Bryce Williams. Good rebound there by Bryce Williams. In traffic, Edie around, and Williams goes up and comes down with it. Toby Naga with it. Back to Bryce Williams. Alec got to set a screen. Toby Naga comes to get it. Five on the shot clock. You know he's going to let it fly. And this time, well short. Air ball. Rebound is batted out of bounds. Lance Jones checks in for Purdue. The lawyer will take a seat. And Rick Mast checks in on the other side. Down low. Easy swatted away from behind. That was Bryce Williams coming over defensively. Got a hand on it. He made a heck of a play coming over. I really like the adjustment Nebraska has made with Braden Smith ball screens. That big being up has taken away his pull up jumpers. And Nebraska just continuing to throw waves of defenders at Zach Eady. Williams keeping himself, trying to take it down low. Some physical play, and he had some steps as he was trying to do so. He's got good position here. That's just a heck of a play from Bryce Williams to come out of nowhere. And that strong side corner and get a hand on the rock. Edie gives it up to Smith. Edie calling for it down low, won't get it. Trying to post up Mass, kick it to the corner. Smith calling for it. Now opposite corner, and that three is short. Rebound goes to Bryce Williams. Right, Nebraska just rotating and rotating and rotating and hanging in there. Purdue got an open shot, but that time just can't get it to go. But the effort that Nebraska's putting out on defense is some pretty high-level stuff. It has been sensational from the opening tip. They have frustrated Edie. Sent a lot of bodies his direction. Now Mass goes right by him for the easy deuce. And this crowd can sense what is happening. Drops it to Edie, and Edie will slam it home. Timeout taken by Purdue. That's Matt Painter who said, hang on. After the bucket from Edie, 84 72. Nebraska oh, called him up, scored 88, and Nebraska scored 72, which in a game like Wisconsin, that, that's pretty good to score that in Madison. But their defense let them down, and tonight the game plan's been really, really good, and they have executed so well. The foul goes against Braden Smith. That's two on Smith. <laughs> Juwan Gary just three of oh, they've got Bryce Williams. Bryce Williams certainly a guy where 87% from the line. If it was Juwan Gary, that, that's who you'd want to get. 69. Smith able to get it to go make that Williams able to get it to go. So 85-72 as we come down to the minute mark.
terrific free throw shooter and Williams two for two. Nebraska, all the credit here. Their defense has been spectacular. Once again, Bryce Williams from the weak side. I didn't think he had his, his best defensive game by any means Saturday in Madison. He's come up with some big plays off the ball tonight. The balance on display, the shooting. An all around impressive performance by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. How tough are these environments on the road? Conference no, play. I mean, conference play is no joke. You, you go on the road in this, in this league, and I give this crowd a lot of credit. This is a really hostile place to play with the snowstorm, with the students not here. It's not what it normally is, and I think that this is one of the better venues in, in the league. But they brought it. With the clock winding down, three off the mark, four goes to Gary. You see a crowd beginning to form courtside. The mass just dribble it out. And what a massive win for Nebraska in terms of the NCAA tournament. Right now they're a net of 58, and that's exactly what this team's goal is. And in this win, now you got to build on this, but this win is a massive win for the Nebraska resume. You can tell there was something happening with this program. You saw the improvement year over year. You saw what they've been doing to start this year. Now Fred Hoiberg has done an unbelievable job. Terrific. You can see the look of disappointment from number one Purdue who goes down to Nebraska. And here come the fans. 